Hello and welcome to this special bonus episode of Positive Forward Motion. Today I'm interviewing Scott Alexander. Back in 1981, I read Scott's first book, Rhinoceros Success. And wow, what an impact it has made on my life. It's no wonder that Scott has sold over 3 million copies. His message is fun, motivating, and will leave you inspired. I am so happy you're here. Scott, thank you so much for being a guest here on Positive Forward Motion today. I am super excited. I have to share really quick that I first read your book, Rhinoceros Success, back in 1981 when I started my very first sales position. And I just want to share real quick that this is not just for sales. I mean, I, this philosophy I carry through, my children know what rhinoceros success is, Every employee I've ever trained or work with does. I believe in your philosophy so much and you have helped me make sure that I maintain that rhinoceros success and that rhinoceros attitude. So I don't want to tell too much about who you are and what you do. I'll let you take over from here and welcome and thank you so much for being a guest today. Well, thanks for having me. 1981. Holy mackerel. We must have both been teenagers back then. Oh, huh? we, we were five. <laughs> yeah, we were five years old reading the Positive Mental Attitude books. Actually, that's how I started, was reading the, the Positive Mental Attitude books. In high school, I uh, ran across a book called Your Greatest Power. And I don't know. Where, my mom must have been reading it, and she was quite a reader, and I just picked it up. And, and I remember my friend coming in and seeing me reading this book, Your Greatest Power, and he said, what's that, a book on earthquakes? I just had to laugh, but the idea behind that book was your greatest power is your power to choose. You know, you wake up every day and you get to choose. Are you going to be happy today? Are you going to be sad? Are you going to get out and do something? Are you going to just lay in bed and waste away? You know, everybody gets a choice to make every day. A very simple concept, but really powerful. And from there, I went on to all the other books, Think and Grow Rich, Zig Ziglar, and Napoleon Hill and all those guys. And, and it became like a hobby of mine in high school, just reading all these positive mental attitude books. And it just kind of infiltrated my thinking. And then when I wrote my own book, Rhinoceros Success, when I was 23 years old, it all just kind of uh, came out for me. And I encourage everybody to write your own motivational books because you know what motivates you, you know, and, and I was that same way back then. I, I had been through a couple businesses where I lost my money and, and I knew what I needed to do to get out there and charge. Um, one of my first businesses in high school was a dog grooming shop. I had met a girl named Kim. I discovered she could bathe and clip dogs. So being the budding entrepreneur, I made her my girlfriend. And then I said, hey, Kim, let's start a dog grooming shop and we'll call it Kim's Grooming. And she loved that idea. And this is where I first got into the study of motivation because my job was to motivate Kim. I couldn't bathe or clip the dog. So my job was to get her to clip as many as she could. We were charging $6 a dog. And the most Kim could do, no matter how hard I pumped her up, was three dogs a day. So uh, we were making $18 a day. That didn't leave much left for Kim at the end of the day. And <laughs> then we got married and uh, went to Australia on our honeymoon. We spent a month over there as well as the rest of our money. And we came back. And this is when the trouble started for me. If, if, Kim, if I wasn't going to get a job, Kim wasn't going to get a job. And, and I didn't want to get a job. But I had this idea to start a, a mobile auto wash business where I had a little uh, truck and I hooked up tanks of water and a pump in the back. And I went out and washed cars at the executive's offices. This was back in the late 70s. Nobody had done it back then. We got a lot of good publicity. We were in the magazines and did really well with it. Uh, for three years, I had three little trucks running around. But I still wasn't satisfied, you know, with my entrepreneurial urgings. I, I wanted a warehouse and I wanted bathrooms and a secretary and phones. You know, I wanted a real business. I didn't want to just be working out of my house. This is when I was young and stupid. And so we got a big warehouse down by the Orange County Airport and I got my overhead. That's what I was thought I wanted. And in six months, lost all my money again. And I was back to square one. And this was the position I was at when I wrote Rhinoceros Success because 
I don't know if you've ever lost all your money, but man, it knocks the enthusiasm out of you. And that's the position I was at. I was feeling sorry for myself. Uh, I was doing everything right. I was setting goals. I was thinking positive. I wasn't sticking knives in toasters. But I discovered you cannot lay on your bed in your three-piece suit staring up at the picture of the Rolls Royce on your ceiling and expect it to happen. It doesn't work that way. You know, you got to get out and do something. I know it's a bummer. Nobody wants to hear that. But that, that's the truth. That's what motivation is all about, is finding something that's going to get you to get out there in the jungle and take action. Well, I knew I needed to be a rhino. I realized that there's two kinds of people in the world. There's the rhinos and there's the cows. Now, the cows, everybody knows cows because they're everywhere. There's 95 cows to every five rhinos. And the cows are the complainers, the rationalizers. They complain every day, but they don't do anything about it. They're just unhappy. And what do cows do? They follow each other around in the pasture day after day, stepping in each other's manure, right? I mean, it's no fun being a cow. And then there's the rhinos, and the rhinos are the people that are out there doing things. They're having fun. They're charging, building businesses, raising happy families, making stuff happen. And, and I knew I wanted to be a rhino. I, had, I knew I just needed thick skin of a rhino. I needed to get out there and charge, take action. And, um, and that was the book that I wrote for myself because I knew what I needed to hear, and that was get out there and do it. You know, and the thing with being a rhino is like you, you have this damn the torpedo spirit. And when you're charging around in the jungle with a damn the torpedo spirit, you're going to occasionally catch a torpedo or two, right? And the torpedoes are the frustrations, the setbacks, the obstacles. Anybody that's an entrepreneur knows what a torpedo is. We get them every day. But when you're a rhinoceros, we've got that two-inch thick skin. We weigh 6,000 pounds. You know, the, the, the torpedoes bounce right off. Now, sometimes they might knock us out and we go down, but we get back right up and we get charging again. Cows don't have the two-inch thick skin. That's why they need the security of the pasture. You know, they need somebody to feed them, give them their coffee break, give them their two-week vacation, take care of them. You know, we're rhinos. We don't, want to, we don't want that. We would rather have freedom than security. We just want to be out in the jungle and charging. And, and you got to have that attitude that it is a jungle out there. Absolutely. And it's all about taking action. And that brings me to one of my favorite parts of your book. I remember when I was a kid sitting there reading it and it made such a profound difference in my life because I'm a doer. I was raised by rhinos. I didn't realize that, that they were rhinos. So I read your book. I'm like, oh, my mom and dad were rhinos. <laughs> no wonder I'm a rhino in the making and I love this book so much. But I remember the part where it says, declare yourself a rhino. And you instruct the readers to, I, I won't give it away, I'll let you share, but to get that index card and, and do something with that. And you say immediately after you, you share what you need to do with the index card, the part that really resonated with me that I loved was that it said, all right, now don't cheat. Like if you're really a rhino, you're going to really get up. You're going to go get that index card right now. And then you're going to write this out and you're going to do this. And that was such a big deal right there because you didn't suggest action. Yes, you did. But then you were like speaking right to me going, well, don't just read over this. If you're really serious about what you're reading right now, you're going to get up and take action and make it happen. Huh. And I love that. Well, you know, it's all it all boils down to desire. A lot of people, when you have a desire, you're going to get out and do the things. And and that's what's hard about being a motivational speaker or author is how are we supposed to know what mo is going to motivate somebody? You know, what is going to get you out of bed in the morning and get you out there doing it? It, it, it all revolves around desire. And if you don't have the desire, just be happy being a cow. You know, we need cows to fertilize the uh, the rhinos' gardens. We need milk so that us, ch us rhinos can enjoy chocolate milkshakes. You know, be a happy cow or be a happy rhino. But, you know, we don't want any sad rhinos. <laughs> We've got an image to maintain. So if you, if you think you can be happy being a cow, then be a cow, you know. But um, if you don't have the desire, you got to th – that's, that's pretty much it. It's over. You know, you got to have the desire for something, and that's something that has to come from within you. And when you have that desire, 
it's got to be so strong that you really don't ne even need to write it down on an index card. You know it. You know it. It's like an obsession with you. They, if if they have to get out the hoops and jump, get the hoops out and you jump through them. You know, you you'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. You're so right. And in the beginning of your book, you share that you dedicated the book to your mom and dad who raised you as a rhino. And I like to touch on this just a bit because oftentimes folks will think, oh, if I was only had better parents or if I only this, if my past was different, then my present would be better. So there are definitely people who had rhinos as parents and then they grow up to be cows. There are folks who had cows as parents who decided, mm -mm, I don't want to live that way. I want to be a rhinoceros. So share with me a little bit about the passion and or the things that maybe you learned from your parents who raised you as a rhino and then elaborate a little on, of course, you had to take charge of your own life and do it yourself, but maybe a little bit there. So anybody out there who's also raising children or a family can go, oh, that's, I need to be mindful of that as a parent so I can raise some rhinos. Well, that, that's a very, very interesting question, Denise. And this is where I kind of veer off um, from other motivational speakers because I, I really believe that you either have it or you don't. I, th I think you were either born a rhino or born a cow. Now, this doesn't help me get a lot of speaking gigs, but it's really what I believe. I, I don't believe I can come in and turn anybody from a cow into a rhino. Let me ask you, Denise, you, because um, you were obviously a rhino from the very beginning. And let me ask you a thing. Did you build forts? Did you collect coins or rocks? Did you put on shows for your friends or your parents and do uh, little entrepreneurial things like that as a kid? I'll bet you you did. Oh, it's such a great question because one of my fondest memories is uh, my my family owned a restaurant and my dad would get a lot of little freebie chotsky things as we would call them. And this one time he came home with stacks and stacks of sticky American flags, right? They were just, you pull, peel the back off and you could put the American flag anywhere. And I took them and went door to door selling American flags for 10 cents a piece. And yes, so <laughs> you're absolutely right. Over the years, I've asked audiences this, and it just keeps getting confirmed all the time that the rhinos, when you look back on your childhood, you were a rhino when you were do when you were a little kid, you were doing those things. And, and and looking back on my life, I'd charge my parents to come in and watch my brother and I wrestle. You know, I put on magic shows for the the uh, neighborhood. Uh, you know, I raised little mice and tried to sell them on the street and uh, had the paper routes and, and all those things as a kid. You know, and then you look at kids and, and all they do is complain and they wine and they they just get into trouble and you, they're bored and you, you can't keep them occupied those are cow kids uh, you know i'm sorry but there, there's you're just either born a cow or a rhino so you know people that read motivational books they're the they're the motivated ones the unmotivated people don't read motivational books and like you you know you say that you read my book back in 1981 and you and you know, it resonated with you. Well, it resonated with you because you were already a rhino. You know, people will say, Scott, your book changed my life. And, you know, that's great to hear. But inwardly, I know I didn't change their life. They were already a rhino. And I just gave them a label to attach to the whole thing. You know, now they knew what they were, but they had been charging their whole lives. And, and if they read the book or not, they were still going to go forward and make things happen. That's why I, I don't go do talks for companies where the guy, the boss will say, hey, Scott, I've got uh, 30 employees and 20 of them are cows. I want you to come in and turn them into rhinos for me. You're right. It's not going to happen because it's having the right people. Absolutely. And so many times when I've given away your book, I will, I will hand it to someone and I smile and I say, enjoy reading about yourself. And they look at me and go, what? And I, whenever I hand it, I say, enjoy reading about yourself. Now, it, probably because I'm in a position where I'm, our company recruits and hires and trains rhinos. So I'm sure without realizing it, I am identifying rhinoceroses to put on a team. And oftentimes, you know, maybe they need coaching and help, but they have that rhino spirit, which is probably why I, I say that. I kind of smirk and go, enjoy reading about yourself. You're going to love this. And 
You're absolutely right. And collecting rhinos, I love when you share that because my house is filled with them, but they're hard to find. That makes it more fun. Uh, now, the reverse of that is if you give the book to a cow and you say enjoy when actually you know it's going to irritate the heck out of them, you know, the cows don't even get past the first few pages. It just it's an irritation to them to, to read this stuff about charging out in the jungle and having thick skin. They don't want to do that. And, and that which leads me to my other um, thing that doesn't help me get a lot of talks is that I'm kind of different than everybody else. You'll hear speakers say, well, success is easy if you think it's easy. I, that's a bunch of malarkey. You know, if success were easy, if anybody could automatically become a success, it wouldn't be success, right? It'd be mediocrity. It's easy to be mediocre. You don't have to do anything. Just sit around in your pajamas all day, watching as the world turns, eat Danish pastry, you know, go to bed early. That's being mediocre. But if you want to be successful, you got to get out and do the things that the cows are not willing to do. You got to get out there and get hit by the torpedoes. You got to get rejected. You have to keep trying. You got to get knocked down, get back up. And it's a constant struggle to keep fighting all the, the entropy that is involved in being an entrepreneur. It's not easy. It's definitely hard, but it's worth it. And, um, you know, especially when you're a rhino, because that's what we enjoy. We enjoy, uh, we don't enjoy getting hit by torpedoes, but we realize it's just part of the game. And you got to have that, that adventurous attitude that, you know, that's just part of the adventure is getting hit by the torpedoes. And really, if you think about it, when you've overcome the worst obstacles in your life, looking back, those are some of your greatest memories. The boys and I like to go on motorcycle rides. We go on these uh, thousand mile rides across the desert every year. And one of our best trips was the trip where we had everything go wrong. The motorcycles broke down. We got a broken bones my one of my sons had an appendicitis tack out in the desert and it was just one bad thing after another but we overcame all the obstacles and now when we all get together and talk about these trips that's the one trip we always bring up and go oh man that was fantastic because we had all these obstacles and we overcame them it's kind of like a mountain climber you know you a mountain climber climbs all these the heights and overcomes all these things and he gets to the top and and it's glorious and i always thought well why would why wouldn't a mountain climber just take a helicopter to the top hover around the top and have a rope lower him down onto the top of the mountain he could have a lunch plant a flag take some pictures then be brought back up in the helicopter where it's nice and warm and go home why don't mountain climbers do that it's because they're mountain climbers, right? And it's the climbing that provides all the memories and makes the the whole experience. And that's the same with us, the entrepreneurs. We're out there every day fighting the torpedoes and overcoming all the obstacles. But that's what makes it an adventure. That's what gives us the stories. You're right. And, and when you shared with your boys and out there having that tough time, not only does that just give you those life stories, but also for them, because torpedoes are going to come at them in other areas of their life. And sometimes when a torpedo comes, you're like, this is nothing compared to that day. Gosh, remember that day when we broke bones and broke out with appendicitis and this, that, and the other. And like you said, it prepared you guys, but it also prepares your children for some other obstacles that are going to come your way because you don't know what's going to happen in life, but to get out there in charge. And I love when you share about being in the jungle, it's steamy and it's things are coming at you at all different directions, but gosh, it's so much fun because you're, you're moving forward and things are happening and that's the best place to be rather than a complacent cow sitting out in the pasture, like bored to death. Yeah. So you could write, you could have written this book, Denise, cause you've been living this lifestyle your whole life. Huh? <laughs> well, as I said again, I'm so excited to be talking with you today. And gosh, I'm telling you, 1981. I mean, when I, I have pictures and pictures when I go to the zoo, first place we have to go is check out the rhinos. And you just get so excited. <laughs> um, and as rhinos, we all have our days, right? And, and you share about, you know, it's okay to understand that you're a rhino and you're allowed to bury your head. It's okay that even rhinos need a break. So share a little bit about that for the audience. Well, sometimes 
yeah, we, I mean, we're going, we're going through heck sometimes. And just because we're rhinos doesn't mean that we're not going to suffer with bouts of uh, sadness or depression or just feeling like we're getting behind. And it's, we all go through that time when we think, oh man, this is it worth it all? You know, and it's times like that, that I say, hey, don't worry about charging, just keep plodding. That's the key. And when you get into those situations, just even if it's one footstep a day in the front of the other, just keep plodding. You know, when the brush gets so thick that you can't, can't make any progress and the bugs and the, and the insects are biting you and the sun's beating down on you and it's just you feel like you can't make it. Sometimes you just have to have that attitude just keep plodding along, you know, just keep that, that desire ahead of you and keep charging towards that. You know, as entrepreneurs, we've all been through that. In fact, in my new book, I have a, a chapter called Gotta Get a Job. And, and we've all been through this period where sometimes it gets so tough in your own business, you think, I just want to get a job. I... I, I want to just go in and get a regular paycheck. You know, that's it all happens to us. And sometimes you might get a job. And but what happens is after a while you realize, oh, brother, this wasn't what I wanted. But, you know, sometimes all you needed was a break away from all the the harassment. And uh, you just needed a breather like going Hawaii. Sometimes you just got to get away and uh, get a fresh perspective and if it's getting a job, then hey, you know, do it. But but you got to have it, that that inner spirit is still boiling inside of you. I, in the same way that I don't believe that cows can really become rhinos, I don't believe that rhinos can easily slip into being cows either. You know, they you might have a day where you think ah, I'm just gonna lay in bed all day and do nothing. You know, that's great. Do it. You're a rhino. You can do whatever the heck you want, but you're not going to be happy doing that every day. You know, eventually that rhino boiling is going to get going and you're going to want to get back out there in the jungle and charge. It's so true. And, and it ties right in when you shared, I was smiling so big when you shared plotting, you know, here comes the sun is beating down on you and you're in this jungle and it's so thick and it's so difficult. And that ties right into, as you know, the message of positive forward motion is, no matter how small your step is, as long as you keep moving forward, sometimes you're right. We can charge forward full speed ahead. We're just fired up and we're well rested and everything is, you know, the seas are parting and everything is going our way and boom. And other times, right, just the smallest, tiniest step in the right direction is still a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I believe that ties in very well to what you mentioned earlier about, you know, especially kids and I don't want to put it out there as all kids nowadays because I, I I run across some that are just, you know, just out of high school or college are phenomenal and they're little rhino makings in themselves. But this need for immediate satisfaction and things to happen so quickly oftentimes has people stop short of their goals and dreams and they forget to keep moving forward because you don't hear the great success. I'm not talking to Scott Alexander who has sold over three million copies of his book that didn't happen out of the gate. You wrote your book for yourself, right? Which I love because it was for you and, and it helped to inspire you, which has helped to inspire millions. But I'm, it wasn't an overnight success. No, definitely not. In fact, um, looking back, I'm kind of amazed at what I went through to, to get it going. I mean, here I was, I was 23 years old when I wrote that thing. Uh, I had no money. I had no experience really doing anything. It was just a book that I knew was good and it motivated me. And, and after I wrote it, I thought, I think I'm going to print this up and sell it. And that's going to be my next business because I was just always looking for another business. And so I had a thousand of them printed up. And here I was. I look back and I think, where were my parents back then thinking, what's poor Scott doing? You know, <laughs> when's he going to get a real job? And and I, I know that all my relatives must have been thinking, ah, oh, poor poor guy. But um, here I was a 23 year old. Um, and I would just go try to get 
talks at like real estate groups, you know, they have their, their weekly Monday meetings. And I would say, I'll come in and do a little 15 minute talk on being a rhino. And, and I'd go in and yeah, da, you ba, da, da, ba, and do and do my thing. And, and I wouldn't sell a book. You know, my goal was to sell one book maybe so I could get five bucks to get gas, to get back home. I remember there were times where I had to call my wife and have her come pick me up because I didn't have enough gas to get back. And it was just every day I would think, who can I go talk to? Who can I get a book to? You know, just trying to think of some way to promote this book. And I remember once doing a talk for a group of very successful entrepreneurs that were all like young people, like 25 years old. And, and it was Secretary's Day and they were all drinking. And I was the speaker. And here I was doing my thing on being successful and and all of a sudden this role came screaming through the air at me and i just ducked and, mi and it missed me and i kept going on and and then all of a sudden napkins and all sorts of food was being thrown at me but it didn't even phase me i just kept going and i remember my wife um sitting, sitting in the front row she was sitting there crying and and it was just it, it, that's just the sort of thing I, I think back, I go, how did I keep going? But I had such a belief in the book and I just never gave up. I just, and, n n but I did have to go get jobs occasionally because I couldn't, our rent was 300 bucks a month back then. Sometimes I couldn't pay it. So I'd get a job selling men's clothing at the mall. And I'd do that for a couple months till I got enough money to get back out there and sell more books. And that went on for about two years. And then it caught on in the Amway organization, which I had never even thought of multi-level groups. And um, so I'd sold maybe 2,000 books in the first couple of years. The next year, I sold 200,000 books. And from there, it just snowballed. And uh, then I wrote the second and third book. And then we came out with a Rhino catalog. And uh, and it was just, it, it just came so fast and furious, but it, it would have been very easy to have quit in those first two years when I, you know, was just trying to sell one book a day, you know, maybe and trying to get five bucks. I love your passion and conviction. And I think that's such a good message for the listeners because your passion or, or your gift or what you believe in and, and you share about, you have to give to get. And if you want to get back all of this joy and enthusiasm and excitement or whatever it is because you believe in it so much just keep giving with all of your heart and all of your passion not half you're not testing the waters a rhino doesn't test the water you're just like boom i'm in and if i can i have it reminds me of a story it just happened to me the other day i was so excited because some of my friends will laugh and tease and go geez like you're always promoting yourself and, you know, your podcast. And I go, <laughs> well, I wouldn't create a podcast if I didn't believe in it. And the reason I promote it is because stories and books and personal stories and antidotes have helped me my entire life. So I think, why not have a platform to be able to help others? So sure enough, I'm at a restaurant. This waiter, young guy was phenomenal. Probably the third question I asked him was, do you listen to podcasts? And my friend rolled his eyes like, oh, here you go again. <laughs> so I told him, hey, here you go. I'd be honored if you listen. You're my audience. I'd like feedback. Three weeks later, I walk into the restaurant and I'm in a totally different section. Here comes this waiter running over, gives me a big hug and is like, oh my God, you're the podcast lady, positive forward motion. And told me that as he was taking a family trip, he listened to it the entire way in his car. He opened up his little um, his little, uh, wallet, you know, the little waiter thing they carry around and my card was in there and it was such a moment, you know, for me and we're human. So the affirmation for me really helped. But I remember I looked at him and I was like, what did you like best? How did it help you? But what it really gave me was that, okay, I do believe in what I'm doing and it is helping others and it's adding value to others, which when you're adding value to others, it comes back twofold. And I love that section of your book as well. When you talk about selling yourself and you have to give to get, and if you're half believing in what you're doing, then don't waste your time on it. Absolutely. Go. It's got to be all full blast and charging, you know, no, no, None of this uh, rhino for a day business and then going back to being a cow. It's got to be 
full on rhino. It's that all or nothing. You're just going to go for it and do it. And that's right. Or because if you're doing half, that's like doing nothing. And, and what's the worst thing that can happen to us, Denise? We're, we're not going to die. You know, it's, uh, we might, we might go broke, but it's that it goes back to that. You got to give to get. That's the, that's what free enterprise is all about. And a lot of people have it all screwed up. They think that it's the other way around you, that the entrepreneurs are out taking and, and taking, exploiting everybody. We're the ones being exploited. You know, you, you, if you don't give, you're not going to get. So it, it, the, the whole theory is the more that you give, whether it's in services or products, the more you're going to get back. So, you know, be a giver, get, be a rhino. Another radically important thing that I just thinking about um, was how important it is to associate with the rhinos, especially when you're going through a downtime. Um, Because you've heard that saying, as you associate, so you become. And it's so true. When I get around the rhinos, I listen to you and you're motivating me. You know, I'm listening to your story of you and the the waiter guy. And that's like getting me going. It's, It's that thing who you're hanging around with. You tend to become like them. And so when you're hanging around with the rhinos, when you're listening to podcasts, when you're reading the positive mental attitude books, that's all influencing you and it's causing you to have that attitude to get out and charge now when you start hanging around a cow man it's poison and all it takes is one drop of ink to discolor gallons of pure water you know one pinch of strychnine is all it takes to poison you and one bullet could be the one bullet that stops you dead in your tracks so even one cow in your life is got you got to get rid of them now it sounds horrible it sounds mean we love cows we love everybody we just don't want to be one and and we don't want to have them influencing us and bringing us down with their negativity so you know avoid the cows at all cost and uh, oftentimes it's hard because a lot of times they're in your family you know <laughs> which makes it hard but it makes you really appreciate when you find rhinos you know and and to feed off of their energy oh my goodness you're so correct uh, you have me all fired up we could go on for hours but you're so right there and i want to back up because when you're like, oh, it can sound cold and callous. And thank you for validating me <laughs> in a sense. Because oftentimes I say, listen, your friends or a relationship, you choose them. If they're making you more unhappy than happy and they're not supporting and empowering and motivating and inspiring you to be your best as well, then for me, it's very simple. I say, unchoose them. People go, oh, how can you be so cold? And I go, that's not cold. You chose them. Now, family, sometimes you can't choose. They're part of our family. So you need to adjust and adapt and do the best that you can because family is family, right? Yeah. But when it comes to who you choose to surround yourself with, we have to remember that every day it is a choice. And you want to surround yourself with people that empower, motivate, and inspire you because if not, and you want to continue with the drama, then sometimes I go, well, I I think you kind of like it because you really do have a choice here. Right. Cows love hanging around other cows because they're all, they're just all stepping in the manure on the most exciting day for the cows when they're led off to the slaughterhouse, right? There's just no excitement, but they, they don't want to see anybody else get ahead of them. They don't want to see anybody else escape the pasture. So that's why they like to keep everybody down. And if some rogue rhino gets in the pen with them and is trying to get out, you know, their first thing is, oh, we got to keep this guy here with us. He's going to destroy his life by trying to get out there and be successful. You know, it's, they, it's really, it's so important to just identify the rhinos and spend the time with them. And, and that's why uh, I love your podcast idea because it's a way to be with a rhino and to have it overcome your whole body listening to it, whether you're driving or laying in bed or whatever you're doing. It's fantastic. And there's so many resources out there in your service. There's the books, there's a podcast. When you talk about Zig Ziglar, I remember Earl Nightingale. I remember putting in the cassette tapes and listening to Earl Nightingale before I mm-hmm. got up and, and would go to my first straight commission sales job. And guess what? When I moved to Texas and got my first straight commission sales job, 
I wasn't an overnight success. I failed miserably, but I wasn't going to give up. And I hung in there until I learned the formula and became top salesperson and could teach others. And I love that as well in, in your philosophy and to share with the listeners own it, own whatever it is that you're going to do. So you have such passion and conviction that you can share that expertise with others. And you stay so laser focused as a rhino. And if you change course, even as life changes, right? Well, we all do. Maybe you, you're an entrepreneur and you decide to try another business, but you're always going to take with you things that you previously learned when you were fully laser focused and gave it your all. There's never going to be wasted time there. Yeah. And that's such a key issue is focus. It's you don't chase two or three things at one time. You you do your podcasts and you're going to dang bloody well make that successful. Then you can go on to something else. But man, you got to charge it one thing at a time. All of your energy goes into that. So right. Otherwise, it gets watered down and your uh, one of my podcasts is called get out your shovel and the one analogy and it talks about you know so many times people dig 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 right but they dig little ruts because they don't stay and dig long enough mm. to really go down and find that goal and then their life before they know it they're 40 50 years old and they're in a sea of ruts everywhere they look rather than some real solid experiences and and staying connected to what it is they believe in you can't just scratch the surface and expect to be an overnight success if you scratch the surface and got off that stage the first time that food was being thrown at you we wouldn't be having this conversation i wouldn't know who scott alexander is <laughs> and i do boy you're motivating me denise that analogy of digging the ruts and having a bunch of ruts Take even if it's a rut in the beginning, you just keep digging and digging and digging, and pretty soon, you know, you won't have a rut. Whatever, you're gonna strike gold or oil or fine water or something, but hang in there long enough, you know. And and for some folks, what's long enough? Sometimes long enough to really know that this wasn't the right hole to dig. And I'm I learned some valuable lessons because, as you said, even failure is an opportunity to learn and grow. That's another interesting question, Denise. How long is long enough? Um, my philosophy is that if you are out doing what you want to do, if you're out chasing success, you are a success. Like As far as I'm concerned, when you were doing your sales job back then, you were a success back then. You were you were digging back then and you just kept digging. You're a success the minute you decide in the morning, dang it, I'm going to be a rhino. I'm going to get out there in the jungle and charge and you take action. And at that point, you are a success. You are on the road. You're doing it. You know, you're having the adventures, you, you know, just enjoy it. It's like happiness. When are you going to be happy? Be happy now. You're a success now. You know, enjoy being a rhino. Have you ever you've gone into those yogurt shops where you can put anything on your yogurt? Well, attitudes are kind of the same way, you know. We can make ourselves whatever we want to be. You know, it, we can make ourselves happy people. Are we going to be curmudgeons? You know, get you get to decide. Again, back it goes back to the, you have the power to choose. What? How are you going to make yourself? You know, you can decide all these things in advance. Like when somebody cuts you off in traffic. Are you going to be the type of person that chases them for two miles, giving them the finger? I'm going to get you, you white Or are you going to be the sort of person to, oh, no worries, mate. You'll be right. You know, you get to decide all that. It's like making your own yogurt. And you have to eat this thing. So you might as well make yourself as delightful as you can, you know. That's right. And it's your life and you're going to live with you the rest of your life. So why not be the most awesome you be that rhinoceros, shine and charge and go for it. And I'm so fired up as well. <laughs> Just talking with you. It's so great. So as we wrap it up, um, one, of course, I want to share with everyone how they can find your book, Rhinoceros Success. And please talk about your other books as well. Uh, well, the, all, the first three rhino books are Rhinoceros Success. Then there's Advanced Rhinocerology and Rhinocerotic Relativity. And they can all be found on eBay or Amazon. Um, my new book is called Rain or Shine, and it's uh, on Amazon or eBay. And the whole idea behind Rain or Shine is 
you know, when when an event is described as going to be rain or shine, it's going to happen, right? There's no plan B. Uh, and if you approach any project with this rain or shine attitude, you're going to succeed because it's there's no backing out. There's no plan B. You're going to do it. And that, that's just one one chapter in the um, book. Oh, well, that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll have to talk again. That sounds very exciting. So that's ready, rain or shine. I can go find that now. Yep, you Excellent. bet. And if there was one thing, so with positive forward motion, I always like to have our uh, guest. There's so many things that you've shared throughout this podcast. And thank you so much. I know someone, so many people are going to be fired up. But if there was just one thing you wanted to leave the audience with one positive forward motion message, what would that be? You know, all of these success books and motivational seminars can be boiled down to one sentence, and that is decide what you really want and get it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to read any more books. You don't have to listen to any more speakers. If you just do that, decide what you really want and get it. Now, it's, it's harder than it thinks because a lot of people don't really know what they want. But if you do know what you want and it's something that you think about all the time, you can get it. Just start getting it. Get out there and do it. The minute you do, the minute you sw- turn that switch from cow over to rhino, you're a success. And just keep taking action. You might get knocked down by torpedoes. You listen to Denise's podcast. You read books. You get back up. You charge again. Just go out and do it. You're not, it's fun. <laughs> I love it. And remember to have fun because that's a whole other part of the book. But every we could go on and on. But the, keep your sense of humor and being a kid and all of that as well. But decide what you really want and go get it. Right. That's all. It, that's all it boils down to. Boom. I love it. Well, I cannot thank you enough for being so gracious with your time. And you are wonderful. And it's, again, a dream come true for me. So, hey, keep up the oh, positive forward you. motion and keep charging. I know you will and I will as well. You too. You've motivated me, Denise. Thank you for listening. To get your free PDF download of the key takeaways from this interview, you can go to denisescattergood.com and sign up to be put on my email list or email me directly, denise at denisescattergood.com. Keep charging and remember to keep up the positive forward motion.